Hello everyone. This and the following video will demonstrate the construction of a hollow and optionally tapered wooden cylinder using the bird smoke technique. This first video will cover the layout and the next will cover the construction. The traditional method of making a stave cylinder, say a wine barrel, was to bevel both sides of the staves at an equal angle, place them in a jig, and secure them with a steel ring. The ring kept all the staves in proper position in a sort of self-locking fashion. Let's examine the layout of the bevel angle. The bevel angle is one half the angle defined by the radii subtending the stave. That stave angle is equal to 360 degrees divided by the number of staves. In this example, therefore, there's 18 staves so the stave angle is 360 divided by 18 equals 20 degrees. That makes the bevel angle, which is half the stave angle, equal to 10 degrees. We will use this calculation later. How many staves should we use? Well, as a concrete example, I've drawn six polyhedrons. Let's imagine we're going to build a mass with a three inch outside diameter and a half inch wall. First compare the stave thickness with the desired half-inch wall thickness. For the square you can see that the thickness is half again as great as the half-inch wall, but for the dodecahedron it's only slightly greater. Assuming that we will trim the outside of the mass to a circular cross-section, notice that the amount of trimming decreases significantly as the number of staves increase. For this example, it appears that using more than 12 staves would be counterproductive. But what happens if we change the design wall thickness relative to the mass diameter? We will use an 8-stave mass as an example. Let us define the thickness ratio as the wall thickness divided by the diameter. Here are four examples. First, note that the outer trimming remains the same. This would be expected since the the designed outer wall does not change. Let us define another ratio, the waste ratio. Let it be equal to the thickness of the stave stock divided by the design wall thickness. Here are the values for our four octagons. Notice that the waste value increases as the design wall thickness decreases. For the mass with a thickness ratio of 0.166 in our case, that's a three inch mass with a half inch wall. The waste ratio is 1.1. For a mass with a thickness ratio of 0 0.041, in our case a three inch mass with a one eighth inch wall thickness, the waste ratio is two. We can lower this high waste ratio by increasing the stave count to obtain the same waste ratio for our 1 8 walled mass as the half inch walled mass, we must increase the stave count to 18. This explains why wine barrels have so many staves. Now let us examine the relationship between the thickness ratio and weight. We will define the weight ratio as the weight of the staved cylinder divided by the weight of the solid cylinder of the same diameter using the definition of thickness ratio, that is the ratio of the design thickness divided by the cylinder diameter, in substituting and solving for thickness ratio, we develop the following formula. The thickness ratio is equal to 1 minus the square root of 1 minus the weight ratio, that all divided by 2. To drive this home, here's an example. We want to build an 8 inch staved mass that weighs 50% of the solid mass of the same diameter 8 inches. What is the design thickness of the massed staves? Here we use the formula, the thickness ratio is 1 minus the square root of 1 minus, in this case, 50% of 0.5, all divided by 2. Under the square root, the 1 and the 0.5 combined to give us 0.5. We take the square root of 0.5 and we get 0.707. 
subtract that from 1 and divide by 2 and we end up with the answer of 0.146. The thickness ratio is equal to the design thickness divided by the diameter. In this case it's equal to 0.146. Since we have an 8 inch diameter as a known, we can solve for the design thickness. And the answer is 1.17 inches. In summary, an 8 inch mast with a 1.17 inch wall will weigh 50% of what a solid mast would weigh. Back to the concept of the beveled stave. With the development of modern glues and epoxies, it is no longer necessary to hold the stave structure together with iron rings. But without the ring to aid in alignment, assembly becomes more difficult, especially with slimy glues lubricating the beveled surfaces. Here's where the bird's mouth joint comes into play. You leave one edge of the stave squared off and put a notch of appropriate shape in the opposite edge, which will receive the squared off edge of the adjacent stave. This notch side resembles a bird's open beak, giving the joint its name. The notch serves several purposes. First, it acts as a self-aligning jig holding the staves in their correct position as the glue dries. Furthermore, since the joint surfaces are at 90 degrees, the joint strength is increased. Another advantage occurs when we want to change the diameter of the cylinder shape along its length, as we shall see later. There are two measurements which define the shape of the notch. The first is the angle of the surfaces relative to the stave's faces. The second is the depth of the notch apex from the outer surface. The notch angle is solely dependent on the polygon chosen, i.e. the number of staves. The apex depth is arbitrary, although in my opinion there is one particular location that is preferable. First, how do we define the angle defining the bird's, we'll call it beak. As defined before, the stave angle is the angle at the cylinder center subtending a stave, redrawn in this diagram. Again, this angle is equal to 360 degrees divided by the number of staves. With a little bit of plane geometry, which I will leave to the viewer to confirm, the angle of the lower mandible is equal to the stave angle, and the angle of the upper mandible is equal to the complement of the stave angle, that is 90 degrees minus stave angle. Using a 12-sided polygon as an example, the stave angle is 30 degrees, that's 360 divided by 12. Therefore, the lower mandible angle is 30 degrees and the upper mandible is 60 degrees, that is 90 degrees minus 30 degrees. Surprisingly simple. Let's try another example, say an octagon. The stave angle is 45 degrees, that's 360 divided by 8. Therefore, the lower mandible angle is 45 degrees, and the upper mandible is also 45 degrees. That is 90 degrees minus 45 degrees. This is the only polygon where the angles are both the same. As noted, the beak apex can be arbitrarily positioned. I have tried to convey that here. Think of the right side stave as sliding from right to left, cutting into the left side stave. We could stop at any position. At first, the lower mandible is small. As we progress, the upper mandible shrinks and the lower one enlarges. There are two apex positions that are commonly used. On the left, we see the first of these two. Note that the top and bottom mandibles are of equal size. This choice is often used with an octagon, since in this case, both the mandible cuts are of equal angle and of equal depth. Often though, limiting oneself to only this arrangement leads to both a waste of wood and increased trimming. The other common choice is shown on the right. Here the apex is positioned such that the outer surfaces of adjacent staves meet at the same point. When this position is chosen, the outer waist is symmetric, and as we shall see, this makes the trimming process much more accurate. I personally recommend this latter choice 
With these concepts in place, let us lay out a few projects to demonstrate the process. Given varying input requirements, the calculations must lead to the final stave dimensions listed below. The stave length, stave thickness or thicknesses, the stave width or widths, both of these depending if the column is tapered or not, the lower and upper mandible angles, and the stave count. Example 1. We want to build a tapered flagpole tapering from 8 inches at the base to 4 inches at the top using off-the-shelf 2x4s. Let's assume that the stock 2x4s are actually an inch and a half by 3 and a half. And we want to do so with a minimum of waste leaving a hole in the center of at least 3 quarters of an inch for an electrical wire. First we note that no scarfing will be necessary because a 20 foot 2x4 will be long enough allowing for final trimming. Second, we are in this case given the stave thickness of an inch and a half. That takes care of two of our variables. We want to minimize waste, so we insist on a waste ratio of less than 1.1. Using the waste ratio definition and solving for the design cylinder thickness, we get the cylinder thickness is equal to 1.36. The next step is determining the stave count. It's easiest to do that graphically. Draw two concentric arcs representing the inner and outer diameters of the design thickness. Make two sets, one for the base of the flagpole and one for the top of the flagpole. For the arc set representing the base of the flagpole, the outer radius is 4 inches, that's half the outside diameter of the pole, and the inner radius is 2.64 inches, which is found by subtracting 1.36, the design thickness of the pole, from 4 inches. Now draw an arbitrary radius extending from the center beyond the outer arc. Then draw a straight line tangent to the outer circle at the point where the radius intersects it. Use a square or compass placed against the radius to assure accuracy. Next draw a parallel line displaced toward the center by a distance from the tangent line equal to the stave thickness. This line will intersect the inner arc at two points. Draw radii through these points and measure the subtended angle. I get 39 degrees. Now find a polygon whose stave angle is closest to but less than 39 degrees. A nine-sided figure has a stave angle of 40 degrees. That's 360 divided by nine. That's too large. A 10-sided figure has a stave angle of 36 degrees. That's 360 divided by 10. So we'll have to use a 10-sided polygon. That means 10 staves. Now that we know the stave count, we can determine the last of the measurements, the stave width. We draw the two arcs representing the base of the pole, and this time construct two radii separated by the actual stave angle, in this case 36 degrees. The construction need go no further than what we have here, but for clarity reasons, let's set this drawing aside and start a new one with more detail. Construct the two arcs as before, then construct three radii separated by 36 degrees. Develop the three tangents to the outer arc as before. These tangents intersect at two points draw additional radii through these points extending the, these radii past the outer arc. Also from the intersection points drop two lines perpendicular to the center tangent. Finally draw a line parallel to the center tangent offset toward the center by the stave thickness of in this case 1.5 inches. I've colored in the area that represents the dimensions of the stave stock at the flagpole base. Note that the stave width 2.15 inches in, is in this case is equal to the length of the center tangent segment between the points of intersection. Furthermore, the design wall thickness can be measured along any of the radii as the distance between the outer and inner arcs, in this case 1.4 inches. We can check the waste ratio value by dividing the stave thickness by the design wall thickness, in this case 1.5 divided by 1.4 equals 1.07 which is less than the original 1.1 and therefore very good. Now pick either of the points of tangent intersection. I'll pick the one on the right and draw a line from it 
perpendicular to the tangent on that same side. Also draw a line parallel to each of the side tangents offset by the stave width, or in this case 1.5 inches. I have colored in the areas that represent the adjacent staves showing the position of the bird's mouth joint. As I said, these elaborate constructions were for illustrative purposes only. Let us go back to the original arc construction. Draw an arc equal in length to the designed outside radius of the flagpole, in this case 4 inches. Then draw two radii separated by the stave angle, in this case 36, inch, 36 degrees. Construct an angle bisector as an aid and then draw a tangent to the arc at the point where the bisector intersects it. The stave width is the length of the line segment between the two radii, in this case 2.56 inches. Note I previously said 2.15, an error on my part. That is all there is to it. If you'd like to measure the design wall thickness, then you can additionally draw a line parallel to the tangent offset toward the center by the stave thickness, in this case 1.5 inches. This line will intersect the radii. The design wall thickness is the length of the line segment between this intersection point and the point of in intersection with the arc measured along the radii. In this case, it's 1.4 inches. For those more algebraically inclined, the following formula works. The stave width equals the outside diameter times the tangent of the bevel angle, remembering that the outside diameter is two times the design outside radius, and the bevel angle is equal to one half the stave angle. For the base of the flagpole, the diameter is 8 inches, and the bevel angle is 18 degrees, multiplying 8 times the tangent of 18 degrees, which is 0.3249, we get an answer of 2.6. This compares with 2.56 computed graphically, close enough. The graphic solution for the top of the flagpole is shown here. Note that the opening at the top is measured here as 0.5 inches, or 1 inch diameter, which meets the, th the 3 quarter inch requirement. Also note the construction method is slightly different. I'll leave it to you to follow. In summary, the stave dimensions for the flagpole are length of 20 feet, stave width of 2.56 inches at the base, tapering to 1.35 at the top, a stave thickness of 1.5 inches throughout, a mandible angle of 36 degrees and 54 degrees, and a stave count of 10. Example 2. We want to make a staved water pipe for a water feature. The outside diameter will be about 3 inches more or less. The shape will be either a hexagon or an octagon. We have a supply of plain cedar lumber which is 5.5 inches wide and 3 quarter inch thick. We want to rip the boards to a stave width that does not leave any waste. The table saw has a 1 8 inch curve. What outside diameter comes closest to 3 inches? Here the limiting factor is that the stave can only be one of a few possibilities depending on the number of cuts. Concerning the loss from the saw curve, here are the possibilities. We see the closest fits are either making two cuts, forming an inch and three quarter stays for a hexagon, or making three cuts, forming slightly over an inch and a quarter stays for an octagon. We would probably choose the wider stays for a hexagon since it is, requires less work and glue. For our next example, we want to replace 11 foot 2 inch diameter tent pole with a slightly larger 2 and a quarter inch but hollow pole weighing 75% of the original. Keep the waste ratio under 1.1. What are the stave dimensions? This problem adds a new twist. We're comparing apples to oranges. We are asked to make a hollow pole weighing 75% of the weight of a pole of different diameter. We will need to calculate a factor relating the weight of the two poles. Since the weight of both poles are proportional to their cross sections, which in turn are proportional to the diameter squared, we can use the following factor to calculate the stave thickness. The adjusted weight ratio is equal to the ratio with the solid mask of a different diameter times the diameter of the solid mask squared divided by the diameter of the hollow mask squared. 
substituting the values for this example and solving, we get a final answer of 0.59 for the adjusted weight ratio. Remembering that the stave thickness is equal to 1 minus the square root of 1 minus the weight ratio, all divided by 2 and multiplied by the design OD, we get 0 0.40 for our stave thickness. We want our final waste ratio to be less than or equal to 1.1. Using the waste ratio definition and rearranging terms to solve for design thickness, we obtain a first approximation of 0.364 for the design wall thickness. Now we have the necessary measurements to construct a stave angle diagram which will allow us to determine the stave count. Because of the small numbers, we are increasing the scale of our diagram for accuracy. Reviewing the process, draw two arcs using the design outer radius and the approximate design inner radius found by subtracting the estimated design thickness from the outer radius. Draw an arbitrary radius extending beyond the arcs. Use this radius to aid in constructing a tangent at the point of intersection. Next, draw a line parallel to the tangent offset toward the center by a distance equal to the stave thickness, in our case 0.4 inches. Construct two radii through the points where this line intersects the inner arc. Measure this angle. I get 38 degrees. A polygon with a stave angle closest to but less than 38 degrees is 10 sided with a stave angle of 36 degrees. Therefore, the stave count will be 10 and the stave angle 36 degrees. Now I'll construct a new diagram to determine the stave width. Reviewing, Draw the outer arc using the outer design radius, and in our case, 1 and 1 8 inches. Draw two radii separated by the stave angle of 36 degrees. Bisect this angle and construct a tangent at the point of its intersection with the arc. Construct a parallel line to the tangent offset toward the center a distance equal to the stave thickness of 0.4 inches. The stave width and the actual design thickness can now be measured. As you check, the stave width can be calculated algebraically, which in, we see agrees with our graphic solution. We can also calculate the actual waste ratio, finding it equal to 0.4 divided by 0.38 equals 1.05, which is better than our specs. In summary, the stave dimensions are the stave length of 11.5 feet, allowing for trimming, stave width of 0.73 inches, stave thickness of 0.4 inches, mandible angles of 36 degrees and 54 degrees, and a stave count of 10. For our last example, and the one we will construct in part 2, we want to build a lightweight whisker pole which can double for a lug sail spar with the following dimensions. Length 7 half feet, diameter 2 and a quarter inches, tapering to 1 and a half inches at both ends. The taper should commence from the middle using a circular arc of appropriate radius ending two feet from either side of the middle and then tapering linearly to the end. The thickness ratio of 0.11 will remain constant throughout. That's a one quarter inch design wall thickness at the middle of the whisker pole. Keep the waist ratio below 1.25. That's higher than normal, but of little consequence since the actual wood loss for such a small pole is minimal and the higher waist will allow construction using less staves trim waste on both sides, in and outside. The goal of this project is to make a very light utility pole that can serve several purposes. I intend to sheathe the pole with epoxy fiberglass to increase its strength and stiffness. The first step is to determine stave dimensions at the middle of the pole. To do so, we must first calculate an estimated stave thickness based on the maximum waste ratio of 1.25. Since waste ratio equals the stave thickness divided by the design wall thickness, we come up with the stave thickness is equal to 1.25 times 0.25 or 0.3125. Knowing the design wall thickness, the design OD, and the estimated stave thickness, we can construct a stave angle diagram. To review, draw two arcs of radius 1 and 1 8 inches and 7 8 inches representing the OD and the ID of the designed wall. 
draw an arbitrary radius and construct a tangent where it intersects the outer arc. Draw a line parallel to the tangent offset toward the center by an estimated scape thickness of 0.3125. This line intersects the inner arc at two points. Draw radii through these points and measure the angle between them. I get 41 degrees. The closest polygon stave angle less than 41 degrees is 40 degrees, that of a nine-sided polygon. We can now draw a new stave angle diagram, this time importing the actual stave angle of 40 degrees. Again, as review, draw the same two arcs of 1 and 1 8 and 7 8 inches, then draw two radii separated by the stave angle of 40 degrees, bisect the angle and construct a tangent at the point where the bisector intersects the outer arc. The two radii, two, excuse me, the two radii intersect the inner arc at two points, connect them with a straight line. The actual stave thickness at the center of the whisker pole is found by measuring the distance between the parallels. The stave width is equal to the segment of the tangent between the two radii. As a check, the actual waste ratio is the stave thickness divided by the design wall thickness, or in our case, 0.31 divided by 0.25 equals 1.24, which is acceptable. We now have our measurements for the staves at the middle. The stave width is 0.82 inches. The stave thickness is 0.31 inches. The mandible angles are 40 and 50 degrees, and the stave count is 9. We have two more stave dimensions to calculate, the stave end width and the stave end thickness. The stave end width can be calculated algebraically knowing the pole diameter and the stave angle. That's 1.5 inches and 40 degrees respectively. The latter gives us a bevel angle of 20 degrees. Since the stave width is equal to the OD times the tangent of the bevel angle, substituting we get 0.15 times 0.364 equals 0.546 inches. The thickness ratio is required to be 0.11 based on the specs. Therefore, since the thickness ratio is equal to the, the uh, design wall thickness divided by the pole diameter, the end design wall thickness is equal to 0.11 times 1.5 inches equals 0.165 inches. Using these numbers, we can construct a stave angle diagram and from it determine the end stave thickness. For these small measurements, make sure you scale up for accuracy. Draw an arc of 0.75 inches radius to represent the outer wall and 0.585 inches determined by subtracting the wall thickness of 0.165 inches from the outside radius of 0.75 inches to represent the inner wall. Draw two radii separated by the stave angle of 40 degrees. Construct an angle bisector and draw a tangent where it intersects the outer arc. Draw a line between the points where the radii intersect the inner arc. And finally, measure the end stave thickness as the distance between this line and the tangent. I get 0.21 inches. In summary, the stave end dimensions are the pole end stave width is 0.546 inches and the pole end stave thickness is 0.21 inches. The whisker pole demonstrates another issue that crops up when making stave cylinders with multiple or changing tapers. The elasticity of wood requires that we make any required bending as gentle as possible to avoid breakage. In this plan view, I have exaggerated the taper for clarity. You can see that if the change in taper from one end of the pole to the opposite is concentrated at the center, the stresses would be enough to break the staves. If, however, the bending from one taper to another was spread over a significant length, the bending radius would be larger, avoiding concentrated stresses. There are, of course, an infinite number of ways to accomplish this, which ultimately are reflected in the general shape of the cylinder. Wine barrels, for example, have a full shape since they are designed to hold as much volume as possible. Spars and masts generally taper more linearly since they are designed to resist bending forces. Generally, the key to success is to make the changes gradual and over as long a distance as feasible. Note the change in the outside diameter is accomplished by narrowing the stave width 
not the stave thickness. The diameter in one hand and the total stave width times the stave count on the other, i.e. the circumference, are related by the formula C equals pi D, circumference equals pi times diameter. Substituting the stave width and the stave count for circumference, we get the stave width times the stave count equals pi times the diameter. In rearranging terms, we get the stave width is equal to pi divided by the stave count times the diameter. It follows that the change in stave width equals pi divided by the stave count times the change in diameter. This stave count is usually larger than 8, so the term pi divided by the stave count is always less than 1, considerably less usually, meaning a small change in the stave width creates a, a much larger change in the diameter. The point of this discussion is that we must be very accurate when we are tapering the stave widths. Back to our example, the tapered ends are, you might say, blended together using a circular arc over a distance of, in this case, four feet, centered on the midpoint of the uh, whisker pole. A little experimenting will convince you that the radius is unmanageably large even for a scale drawing. For this reason, I prefer to lay out this arc by the following method. On a 2x6 that will be used for our tapering jig, draw a straight line with length, e length equal to the whisker pole, in our case 7.5 feet. Drive a finishing nail at each end point. At the midpoint, construct a perpendicular and measure up a distance equal to the difference in the stave width between the middle and ends of the pole. In our case, it's 0.274. That's 0.82 minus 0.546. Drive a nail in this point. Measure off from the midpoint in each direction the distance equal to the desired endpoint of the arc, in our case, two feet. Find a sufficiently stiff batten, a three quarter square work for me. Clamp a similar batten to both ends such that only the section of the batten in this area of the arc, that's the center four feet for us, remains unsupported. Now bend the prepared batten against the nails on the outside of the arc and drive the finishing nail tightly against the batten opposite each of the previous three nails. Assure that the batten runs fair along the arc and straight from the arc ends to the end of the pole. Then draw a pencil line along the inner edge of the batten. As we will see in the next video, this curve will be part of the jig used to taper the stave widths. Often one of the final steps in building a stave cylinder is trimming the outer waist down to the designed outer circumference. As shown in this diagram, the process can be thought of as changing a polygon into another polygon of twice the number of sides, and if necessary, repeating the process, changing the resulting polygon into one with four times the number of sides. If you choose the beak apex position such that the outer stave edges meet at a point as illustrated here, this process is relatively easy even unbearably tapered shapes. Trimming proceeds by removing the high points with a planar sander, creating a flat surface tangential to the, to the uh, design wall. Guidelines will tell us when to stop. By the way, these lines are not necessarily parallel or even straight, depending, of course, on the shape of the outside of the cylinder. This will become clearer in the shop in the next video. What we can do now is develop the method to determine where to draw the guidelines. First, let's review a few definitions and formulas. The stave angle is a measure of the angle subtended by a stave and is equal to 360 degrees divided by the number of staves. The bevel angle is defined as one half the stave angle. Further, the stave width is equal to the cylinder OD times the tangent of the bevel angle. Let's look at a ratio between the width of the staves of a polygon and the width of the staves of a polygon of twice the number. We'll use an 8-sided octagon and a 16-sided polygon as our example. The stave width of a 16-sided polygon divided by the stave width of an 8-sided polygon is equal to the cylinder OD times the tangent of the bevel angle of a 16-sided 
polygon divided by the OD times the tangent of the bevel angle of an eight-sided polygon. The ODs cancel out, leaving the ratios equal to the tangent of the bevel angle of a 16-sided polygon divided by the tangent of the bevel angle of an eight-sided polygon. And in our case, that's tangent 11.25 degrees divided by the tangent of 22.5 degrees, which equals 0.48. This ratio, of course, depends on which polygons are compared. For example, comparing a square of four sides with an octagon of eight sides, we have the tangent of 22.5 divided by the tangent of 45 is equal to 0.414. But what is important for us is that as the number of polygonal sides increases, the ratio gets ever closer to 0.5. For example, if we double the size of a 16-sided polygon to a 32-sided polygon, the ratio is equal to the tangent of 5.625 degrees divided by the tangent of 11.25 degrees, which is equal to 0.495, almost 5. As a consequence, for any stave cylinder with a stave count over 8, we can, in practice, draw our trimming guidelines such that the new stave width will be equal to one half the original. A very useful rule indeed. Looking again at the cross section of our cylinder, we can measure in from each side of the original stave a distance equal to one quarter of the stave width, leaving the space between the marks equal to one half the original, thus locating the position of the new polygonal surface. Of course, since the width of the staves often changes along their length, the actual measurements must also change. In the shop, we will build a spar gauge to facilitate drawing these trim lines on each of the staves. Well, that pretty much covers the calculations necessary to build a stave cylinder of just about any specification. The next set of videos will demonstrate the construction of our whisker pole that we laid out in example 4.